Hello and welcome to today's video. In today's video I'm going to talk about the Microsoft OneDrive and just to be clear I'm talking about the OneDrive that you find in Office 365 not the free one that you would get if you had a Hotmail or Outlook.com account. So your OneDrive is designed for people who are in work and they would have traditionally saved their personal files to a P drive or something of that nature or even people who used to save and still do save to their C drive. So the files that we save into here are by default private and only we can see them, but we have the ability to share them with others. Now, I've already gone to my OneDrive, so I've logged into office.com, I've pressed on OneDrive, and I'm seeing my folder structure. Now, when you first set up your OneDrive, if you press the sync button and follow the steps and it's very self-explanatory it will then create you a OneDrive account on your computer so on File Explorer you'll see on this side panel I've got this OneDrive NPM computers and the same folder structure appears in here now if I do a new folder I'm just going to put a new folder as its name That will start to upload, if we look at the bottom here, it will start to upload items into my OneDrive. And later on, when we refresh this screen, we will see that folder. So anything that I do in that OneDrive area on my computer will actively get copied into the cloud for me. The good thing with that is if you work on multiple devices, you'll have access to all your files on both devices because it will work out what files are missing and which files are the newest and it will populate those without you having to sit there and work it out yourself. Okay, so what happens if I want to share a file? So let's say I want to share this Excel spreadsheet. Rather than attaching that to an email as I traditionally would have done and send that to the person, we then both end up with our own copies of that file what I can do now is I can actually share the copy that I've got. So both of us be, would be working on the same file. To do that, I simply float, float over the file that I want to share. And by pressing this button here, I'm presented with this screen. So on this screen, it's asking me who do I want to be able to share this file with. So the default is people you specify can edit. So I would put someone's email address in below and that would be the only person who can use the link that they're about to receive. If I go in the drop down, you will see that I can upgrade that to everyone with the link. So anyone who receives the email, even if it's forwarded on by the person I send it to, would be able to access the file. I can set it so that the link is only accessible to people within my organization. Or if someone loses the link or they can't work out how to get to it again, I can even send the link again to someone who's already got access. The option that we're on, I can even reduce their ability to edit it. So at the moment they could change the file and I would see the changes. I can untick it, which then makes it that they can only open it and save their own copy or I can even activate this and they would only be able to open it in the web browser. So purely if you were unticking this and you were sending it to someone, that is a much quicker and a much smoother way of sending it to them. And also if it's a big file, they don't need to have any special limit set in Outlook to receive the files because they're only receiving a link and then they would be downloading it. If I activate that they can edit it. So if I press apply now, I can then put in the email address of the person that I want to send it to. So I will send it to my wife and then I can put a message in. So hi Amanda, this is the file you need. Now I do have two other options at the bottom here. I can copy the link, so if I'm using some chat program, say I'm using Teams or Zoom, once I've filled in the bits at the top, I could press the copy link 
I could just then paste that link into that chat rather than sending them an email. Or rather than getting this very generic email that they get from Microsoft, I can press the Outlook button and I can do it through a traditional email with my signature and everything on. Now when I press send, that will then send that link. And if I go to my emails, and I'm just going to go into my folders, and I've got a OneDrive example here. This is what the email looks like when you receive a shared link from someone. So it tells you who shared the file with you. It tells you their message, and it even then shows you an indication of what program it's in. And if you click on that, it will open it. Or alternatively, you can press on the open button. Now, once you've shared a file with someone, it will change from being uh, from being private to shared. Now, if you then wanted to see who you shared a file with, or even take away their permissions at a later date, just by going to the word shared at the end, you can click on it, and you can then see all the people that you've shared with. If you press on the little icon next to the picture, you can then see who it was you shared with, and you then have the ability to take away their permission. So if I'd put multiple email addresses in, I could go in here and find the person and just take one person's permission away. So for that one person, the link wouldn't work, but for everybody else it would. Now, if I wanted to take permission away from the whole group of people that I'd shared to, I would go to the ellipsis button at the end of copy, I would then press the cross there and that will then remove permission for everyone who that link was intended for. Okay, so as well as sharing files within your OneDrive, you can use your OneDrive as a way of having versions of the same file. So instead of having to save files as version 1, version 2, version 3, you can actually save files and just by saving over them, it will make a version. So if I go down to this file here, press on the ellipsis button, you will see I've got this version history. And when I go in it, I can see each of the versions from when it was first put into the OneDrive. I can see who was the person who made the, the change and the date that that happened on. Now, if I wanted to look at one of the older versions, I just float over the version I want to look at. I can press the three dots and I can open that file. If I've decided, you know, getting a few too many versions here, I want to get rid of some of the older ones, I can actually go to any of the older ones, press the ellipsis button and I can delete it. Also, if I've made a mistake and say version 11 is wrong, I want to go back to version 10, I can also press the ellipsis button and I can restore. Now, when I do that, it will actually make a version 12. So version 11 will still be there. It doesn't wipe that out. It just puts a, a copy of 10 above it as version 12 that then supersedes it. Okay, so as well as sharing, as well as having a version history, we can do pretty much everything we can do if it was on our computer. By going to the ellipsis button, I can open it. And I can choose to open it in the browser version of the program if there is one or in the desktop app. I can do a preview where I can have a look at the content of the file. So it's going to preview it for me now. Or I can copy the link, manage access, download, delete, and I can move and copy. And the move and copy isn't just within the OneDrive. If I did move or copy, I can move that to any of these SharePoint document libraries that I've got access to as well. Now, if I go to details, I can actually see a preview of the file. I can see that it's been viewed seven times in this case. and I can see an indication of when those views were. I can also see who has access to the file there. And if there'd been any activity recently on that file, I would see a history of what the activity was. Okay. Now, 
if you've set this up to link to your computer and you delete files by default files when you delete them from your computer go into your recycling bin now if you empty your recycling bin those files are gone pretty much but with the OneDrive, when you empty your recycling bin on your computer, they are still stored in the OneDrive recycling bin. So if I go over to the recycling bin here and I press, you will see all the files and folders that I've recently deleted. I can go to any one of those and restore them. And there is even, if I get all the way to the bottom, there is a stage two recycling bin that I can access. So if I delete out of here, as long as I realize within 30 days, I can get those items back now if at a later date I want to do a bit of tidying up and want to remove some of the share privileges I've set up I can go to the shared area on the left hand panel and I can see things that have been shared with me so if someone has shared a file with me I don't need to go to the email each time and open it I can just look at the files I've, I've access to in here but I can also go to shared by me and look at all the files that I've shared, see where they are, and see who was the last person to, to work on them. I also have a list of recent files that have been used within my OneDrive. And then going back to my files takes me back to the root directory. Now you'll notice, can you see here, the new folder that I made on my desktop, that now appears in my folder structure as well. And to denote it's new, we have this little sort of almost like a shine coming off the side. With the activity panel as well activated on this view, you can see all the activity that I've recently done within OneDrive. Okay, guys. So thank you very much for watching the video. If you found it useful, can you give me a thumbs up? And if you'd like to see more videos from me, can you subscribe and remember to press the notification bell because I plan to release a couple of videos each week. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.